Hi guys, welcome back to another SUP Border how-to video. This week we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna look at volumes. What the hell are volumes? What is a volume? And also what volume should you be looking at in your boards? So what is volume? Well, if we take the quote from Wikipedia, it says a book forming a part of a work series or the amount of space that a substance or object occupies or that is enclosed within a container. In other words, it's how much air or space is inside your board and how that affects the water when you stand on around the board. Straight away, the best thing you can do to grasp the volume issue on boards is to understand your weight in kilograms. If you understand that, it's way easier. That is because one kilogram of weight is equal to one cubic liter of volume. So for instance, if you weigh 80 kilograms and you stand on an 80 liter board, the board will float just below the surface. In other words, it'll have neutral buoyancy. It won't sink or it won't float. It'll be completely neutral. So from that, we can work out, if we're looking at three basic board types, let's look at a general intermediate beginner all-round SUP, or a intermediate surf SUP, and a performance surf SUP. First off, for the general all-round intermediate SUP, a bit of everything. You should be looking at between 70 to 100 litres extra literage on top of your, your weight. So if you weigh 75 kilograms, you should be looking at a 175 litre board. That will give you 100 litres spare volume, loads of float to glide down the river, catch some waves, give you lots of stability to get your sup surfing and all that stuff, sort of stuff sorted. So that's your general paddling first time board. Moving volume downsides from that, we're looking really at the more intermediate sort of surf based SUPs. The reason we're looking at surf based SUPs is because really if you're paddling on flat water, you still want to have lots of volume because volume means you have extra length and which means you have more glide on your board, which is why race boards are generally really high volumed. So intermediate surf SUPs, around 50 to 80 litres of volume plus your body weight. Because they are slightly smaller in volume, you're going to have a better rail shape, a bit more performance, but still have that stability to wobble out and catch some waves for the first time or intermediate surf environment. Moving on to the more advanced sort of surf sup, really the sky, well, the seabed is the limit, let's say. Volume wise, anything from your same body weight, but that not many people are paddling that, except you're in the pro tour maybe. Really it's sort of five to 10 liters plus is your sort of advanced sort of size up to the sort of 40 liters plus. So if you really want a more performance, progressional board that's gonna take you surfing further, look between 10 liters to 40 liters plus your body weight, and that will give you a nice amount of rail shape, but also have your body be able to plant the rail and use the board to the full potential on the wave face. Obviously there are other things to think about with board volumes too than just the numbers and how much we weigh. For instance, the board shapes and sails make a massive difference. This board from, is a Matt Nash Mad Dog, it's 121 litres. That's an RRD Kotan, it's 121 litres. Exactly same volume, completely different feel, completely different how wobbly it is and standing on the board and how the board is shaped and how the volume is dissipated around the board. Again, you've got that to consider. You've also got to remember if you're surfing in cold conditions and you're wearing a lot of neoprene, you've got hoods, you've got boots on, gloves, a 5.3 suit, that will absorb water and that will weigh more too. Same with your leash, your fins, all of it goes into the equation if you really want to get technical and add it all up because it will make a difference opposed to you surfing in a pair of board shorts which don't weigh anything. Again, also water density. If you really want to get technical, the almost obvious one is fresh water, you will sink more, salt water will give, be more buoyant. So just bear that in mind. If you're fresh water paddling a lot, and you're used to paddling your board in fresh water, when you go to the sea and it's a little bit choppy, you might be a bit put off, but actually it's gonna be more volume, you're gonna feel more float in the sea, salt water there. So there's another thing to bear in mind. You will notice the difference if you go from fresh water to salt water. So whether you're starting off for the first time or you're an experienced paddler, just paddle a board, paddle as many boards as you can, but take a note of the volumes so you can relate to other boards off of that. And then when you see a boards online or for sale or secondhand, you can remember the volume that you paddled before in relation to the board you're looking at. Obviously take a note of the template, the more pulled in and, and less sort of outline template there is, the board's gonna be a little bit twitchier than the wider nose boards like that. 
So there you go, guys. I hope you found this video a little bit informative and it's taught you a bit about volume. Check out SUP Border Mag for some more SUP stuff and also check out SUP Border Mag Pro for that next level of SUP Border content. See you next time.